and welcome to creating deployment for Maya 2011. Hi, this is Anil Chaudhary, product support specialist and in this video we will walk you through creating a typical deployment for Maya 2011. This course is intended to walk through creating a deployment for Maya 2011. Learn what a deployment is, the process and the best practices for deployment creation. First, let's take a look at what deployment is. Essentially, it is a server-based image of a product installation files, named installations which can be customized to your environment, specifying license and desired setting for your installation. The advantage is the similar interface as standard installer. Ideally, this deployment is created, saved to a network location and then be installed to a host workstation. Let's take a look at five primary advantage to creating a network deployment. Firstly, it is an efficient way to get your product installed onto multiple computers, where you can specify it as a standalone, multi-seat standalone and a network type licenses. Server admin image avoids the need to distribute DVDs for installation. You are creating one image, you do not need DVD media. It can be installed directly from your deployment image. It allows you to customize and standardize the installation for all your workstation. By customizing the installation once, you, by unifying the product registration information across all platforms, if your product have service pack available, it will allow you to install the service pack along with your master install. This avoids the manual deployment of service pack later after the installation. Logging option allows tracking of installation status. It's an easy way to do a silent installation of a product. With the product deployment, you have an option to install as a silent mode. When this is active, the installation proceeds without any explicit user input. So user won't see anything and they will not be able to change any information setting. Next, let's take a look at the deployment process overview. The first step is to create a network share. Technically, this does not have to exist first. You can always install the deployment first on a drive in a server and then share it later. When creating a deployment, choose create a deployment from the product installer. Then create the deployment. This creates the administrative image and then the MST files, which are used by the administrative image and tells how it to be installed. Then from the host workstation, you want to run the deployment. Make sure before you go ahead and install on all workstation, take one workstation and run the deployment at this workstation. Verify the installation prior to installing it on all workstation. If you have made a mistake or want to do any changes, do it before pushing it to entire organization. Let's look at some best practices for creating deployment. Create the deployment from a workstation instead of a server. This helps eliminate the need for the same computer to run the visit, read the media and write the files. The combination of these tasks can increase the time necessary to create the deployment and can cause corruptions in the deployment. Create the deployment to a shared network location from an administrative workstation. Do not create a deployment over WAN or a VPN. Connection over WAN or VPN are typically slow and can cause errors during deployment creation. The deployment creation process may not be completed successfully or some files may end up missing or corrupt. Copy the media to a hard drive. If you are working with a physical media, as opposed to media obtained through electronic fulfillment, copying the entire content of the product media to a local hard drive can speed up the process of creating a deployment and reduce the potential for corruption. This is even more important when you consider that some product installers copy the data from the installation media to a destination folder multiple times, 
thus increasing the deployment creation time by factor of 3 or more. Copying the media to a local hard drive helps ensure that there are no communication error with the disk drive and increase the speed of creating deployment by not having to read the data directly from the DVD. Disable antivirus software. Antivirus software often causes problems when creating deployments. Active virus scans that scans every file being written and read can cause the process to take much longer. Additionally, antivirus software can block certain files from being written or can modify those files can cause corruption. Before creating a deployment, create a shared directory on either a workstation or a server. Keep the shared name simple and short. Don't include any spaces in the share name. Don't bury the shared folder too deeply in on a drive. Create a separate folder for each deployment image. Creating multiple deployments in a single folder can result in corrupt client installation or serious problems. Create and store deployment image on a FAT, FAT32 or an NTFS file systems only. File systems such as DFS, NFS, AIX, Linux, Unix and others are not tested or supported by Autodesk including file system found on network attached storage NAS devices. Verify that all users have full read write access to the network share where your deployment are located. Use a uniform naming convention UNC when specifying network paths instead of using map drive letters. Not all computers share the same map drive letters and restricting yourself to UNC path will help avoid these problems later. Be aware of the deployment type you are creating. The default deployment license type is standalone. And you must pick the configure button to change the deployment type to network. If you are not paying attention and just take the defaults, you may not end up with what you expect. Make sure you choose the appropriate operating system for your deployment. The first page of the deployment wizard offers the option to choose whether you are creating a 32-bit or a 64-bit deployment. This allows you to create a deployment for a specific OS type regardless of the platform in use. This option defaults to the type of OS currently in use, which may not be appropriate for client computers on which the deployment will run. If you are creating the deployment on a 64-bit OS but your client computers are all running 32-bit, you should choose that option to create the 32-bit deployment instead. Pay close attention to the informational links in the sidebar of the deployment wizard. These links change from one page to the next and can provide quick answers to the most commonly asked questions about deployment options on each page. Avoid modifying an existing deployment once it has been used to install a program. Instead, create a new deployment for each modification that you make. Avoid moving deployment between servers. If you must do so, you will at a minimum. Need to modify the deployment to insert its current location to, into the deployment structure. Install onto one workstation only to verify before installing it elsewhere. The worst thing that you can do is to create a deployment and install it on 100 system only to later find out that you made a mistake and need to start all over again. Now let's go through the process of creating this deployment. If you are creating the deployment from the DVD media, this dialog box will pop up when you put the DVD media into the DVD drive. If you are creating it from the downloaded media, you will need to double click on the installer. If the setup is not started, then navigate to the extracted folder and click on setup.exe to launch the product installer. In this case, we need to create the deployment. So we are going to click on create deployment to begin the process. The first step to creating the deployment is to specify the administrative image location, the deployment name and the type of deployment. Always remember on the left sidebar have help links 
that have answers to all common questions. First, let's specify where we are going to save the deployment. You can browse to the network location or simply type in the path. Remember to use UNC path and avoid using spaces into the folder structure. Then the deployment name. This name will be the shortcut which user will use to install the product. I will name it as Maya2011. And finally choose the kind of deployment you want to install. Here my installer is 64-bit. I'm going to choose a 64-bit deployment and next to continue. On this page you will choose which product you will need to include in the deployment. I will leave this as default and click next. Before creating the deployment you must select your country of agreement Review and accept your license agreement so that you are aware of what you can and cannot do with your software license. After reading, choose I accept and click next to proceed. On the user and product information, enter your first name, your last name, your organization, the serial number and the product key. Now both this information, the serial number and the product key, you will find it on the product DVD or the email that you have received regarding your product. Please note that the information that you enter here will be permanent for this deployment and will be displayed in the help about Maya section. Once deployment is created, you cannot change this information. You will need to make sure that you enter in the information correctly or you will need to recreate the deployment again. Once you enter the details, click next to proceed. Under the general deployment setting, we have several options that we need to pay close attention to. First, if you like to create a log file, make sure that this option is checked and specify the location where the file will be created. By default, it uses the path you specified in the administrative image location. A separate log folder will be created for the log. Now, if you like to create a log file for the client installation, check this option for create client log. Finally, if you want the client installation to run in the silent mode, select the silent mode option. When the silent mode is active, the user initiates the deployment and the installation proceeds without any explicit user input. The user will not be able to change any installation settings. Let's click next and go into create deployment dialog. From this menu, you can choose to create the deployment with the default settings or further configure the deployment. Let's go into further customizing and look at the available options. Click configure. The first option is for license type. You can choose to create the deployment with a standalone or a network type license. For a network type license, you will need to specify the server, whether it is a single license server, distributed or a redundant license server. We will go with the default, that is the single license server. You will need to specify the server name. That will run the network license manager. You can either browse to that location or just simply type it manually. I'll click next to proceed. For the product installation path, I will leave this as default for Maya and all the other products that I have chosen for this deployment. So it's documents, match mover, composite and back burner. Coming back to Maya, I will choose next to select the preferences. I will add shortcut to the quick launch toolbar, add to the system path and add a shortcut to the desktop. Once done, Click next. On the install additional files section, you can choose to add additional files to your deployment. On your left, you have common answers as to which type of files you can add. Since we don't have any, I will leave it as default. Clicking next on this page will bring you to configuration complete section. 
Now we are done customizing the available option and at this point you can click on configuration complete. Once you complete the configuration you will see in the information on the changes that you have made to the deployment. It has recorded all the information such as this is a network type license, a single server model, the license server information and so on. Next you want to hit create deployment and at this point it will create the admin image. Once the wizard have finished creating the deployment, the deployment complete page will be displayed. At this point the deployment is now complete. The deployment page will display two links to install the deployment on the host workstation and to modify the deployment if needed. These are the server location that you had specified during the initial deployment creation. 